the 41st millennium. An era, perhaps a name in its own right, synonymous with strife, with ignorance. It should hardly come as a surprise to those who study these archives of mine that, in these times, knowledge, the history of our species, a way in which we know ourselves, can be irrevocably lost at the simple swaying of a hand, be it erroneous or intentional. No knowledge is safe. It could simply be one of countless millions of cargo shipment manifests that exist, or perhaps the yearly census of a hive city. Far more worryingly, it could be on the scale of strategic information, vital for the future defences and contingencies of the Imperium. Crucial supply lines, even the knowledge of a planet's location or very existence, are at risk. However, lost knowledge is not always unrecoverable. Even from that which is purged, ashes and embers can scatter and remain drifting on whispers, stories, secrets. Until they are happened upon. Know then that these are recorded excerpts of tales of a once lost leader, a once lost gambler, the once lost Primarch, Bugfucker. <sighs> Why do you do this? asked Sanguinius. Bugfucker gazed after the viewing port of the Insect Pussy Pioneer Legion flagship, Beetleclit. He seemed to ponder for a moment. Butterfly Cuddlefuck, captain of the MILF, the Moth I'd Like to Fuck squadron, wondered what could possibly keep his father's massive intellect occupied for even a moment. Finally, Bugfucker spoke. We do what we can because we must, brother. What else are we to do, us Primarchs? If you cannot stomach what must be done, then perhaps the war front is not for you, Sanguinius. <sighs> you fuck bugs. Even I don't want to be your friend, Sanguinius responded. The following excerpt from A Stick Book Too Far, page 21. Bugfucker like all Primarchs, was a man of supernatural focus. Unlike other Primarchs, however, Bugfucker lost a bet once. As a result, he had to rename himself to Bugfucker, and then, as was apparently quoted, fuck every kind of bug you can. Bugfucker spent the next 60 years violently reuniting the entirety of his adoptive planet, Millipenius transforming it from a feral world into a thriving network of metropolises. He did all of that, so that he could then use the people to collect every bug on the planet and fuck it on live television. Literally no one knew what the big black squares all over the place did until they lit up and their leader filled the screen. Unfortunately for the people of Millipenius, they lived on a death world, and most of the bugs were big enough to fuck. With every thrust of his bare hips, Bugfucker not only fucked a bug, but also his reputation. With every thrust, the unrest on the planet grew. When would the infernal hip-slapping and grunting stop? Why was he doing this? The people of Millipenius still had deep roots in their tribal past, and believed that Bugfucker was casting a spell with his weird penis. A civil war broke out between the people who thought that he was a blessing, and those who believed he was cursing them. Those who believed that they were being blessed began to livestream footage of him fucking some bugs to provide holy background noise for their pre-dinner prayer. The devout, too, began to fuck bugs. Many brave souls died trying to figure out which bugs were okay to fuck. On the other side, there were a bunch of people who staunchly refused to fuck any bugs. A middle ground simply could not be found. War, as we are so now intimately familiar with. Raged for decades, and both sides experienced horrific losses. However, what Bugfucker hadn't counted on were BTDs, bug transmitted diseases killing almost every single person in his army. 
People bled from every orifice erupted with eggs had their minds usurped by brain parasites. Some even began to enjoy fucking bugs and mental illness, as is often the case, is the most dangerous illness of them all. As the last of his loyal subjects died, getting a reverse cowgirl by a truck-sized beetle, Bugfucker came to the last few bugs left that he hadn't managed to fuck. Unfortunately for the Emperor, he had seen all of this. During the Emperor's time as an active participant in the Great Crusade, year after year, the Emperor would leave the Bucephalus on his mid-sized sedan-class Star Cruiser alone, too ashamed to bring anyone along. The Emperor appeared in orbit over Milipenius and was saddened to find that he had gotten there just in time to save his kid. There were only two more bugs! Bugfucker shrieked. The Emperor kneaded the bridge of his nose with his index finger and thumb. And you blew up the whole planet! Now I will never finish my duty, Bugfucker lamented. Everyone was dying from insect STDs, the Emperor said in a low growl. It was a mercy killing. Are you saying my bugs gave everybody STDs? I will have you know I fucked almost every bug on that planet, and I don't have any STDs. Bugfucker rolled up his sleeve to reveal his tattoo. A flaming skull with a knife in its mouth, staring angrily at the viewer. Sparks shot from its eyes and flames haloed it. In its jaw was an ancient brand of combat knife. In burning parchment, streaming above and below the skull was written Bugfucker's creed. If I can do it, anyone can. Bugfucker said proudly, That is my motto. You're not a human being, Bugfucker said the Emperor, bluntly. Bugfucker looked confused for a moment. Oh. Excerpt from A Kink in the Amour, A Bug in the Code, a Primark novella, page 203. Before Bugfucker took the reins of his legion and following his revelation, Bugfucker got a stern talking to by the Emperor. But even more before that, Bugfucker's legion was known as the Abstinence Crew. The Abstinence Crew were deeply insecure, and constantly sought to prove that their focus was fully on the war effort. During the Unification War, the Abstinence Crew was known for their use of overwhelming power to quickly and brutally destroy any defences. They were also known for their uncomfortable PSAs given to cowering refugees. They would raise nations with bolt and blade and then give a talk on how waiting to have sex after getting married was the way to go. Then Bugfucker came, and came, and came and came all over the poop deck. A rift formed in the abstinence crew when the Emperor delivered Bugfucker to his legion, and then sent him to his room. The crew had read the reports on their Primarch, and now knew of his actions. Much of the legion sided with their Bugfucking father, claiming it was them who was wrong to abstain. The other half stayed silent. Not wishing to fuck any bugs, but too embarrassed to talk about it. Bugfucker stood in his new chamber. It was dull and boring, and smelled nothing like bugs and cum. It smelled nothing like home. Even now, Bugfucker could not completely process the loss of his home, and the part he had played in it. All he had done was to fulfill his responsibility. He knew now that he was made that way down to a genetic level, was that why he did it? Fucked every kind of bug on Milipenius, 
because some uncontrollable desire to fulfil responsibilities at any cost didn't sit well with the childhood bet? Was there really any good reason for his entire life's work? A ceramite gauntlet rapped on Bugfucker's chamber door. Bugfucker bade them enter. A space marine in deep dark red armour came in, carrying a t-shirt. I believe this is yours, the space marine said, handing the quintuple XL Dave and Buster's t-shirt to Bugfucker. We managed to recover this artifact from your palace. My brothers and I tried to recover more. We word bearers do what we can to preserve the old ways. We wish we could have saved more. I am truly sorry, my lord. We of the word bearers know your pain. Bugfucker took a deep whiff of his old shirt. Of all the shirts on Millipenius to survive, it just had to be Bugfucker's old rag. It smelled like bugs and cum, the little bit of home that he missed. Thank you. This is just what I needed, said Bugfucker, a tear rolling down his cheek. You are welcome, my lord. My name is Erebus. I know of you. I read of you in the files over there. Bugfucker pointed at a big pile of crayon-marked disorganised papers that had been glued to the floor. I take my research very seriously. Then, Bugfucker remembered that he gave everyone on his planet BTDs by making bug sex fashionable. Well, usually. I heard of your mission to fuck every kind of bug that you could. Truly an ambitious goal, said Erebus. Bugfucker let out a mirthless laugh. <laughs> More like a foolish one. It only brought my people ruin. On the contrary, your mission brought your people an epoch not seen since the dark ages of technology, Erebus said. I believe your war was simply weeding out the weak. In fact, had the Emperor left you alone for just a while longer, I bet Millipenius would have come out of the other side a utopia. Do you really think so? Bugfucker asked, feeling refreshed by a supportive voice in his life. Why, yes. Unfortunately, the Emperor had to do what he had to. He couldn't let the diseases on your planet spread to the rest of the Empire, Erebus explained. But that's just a lesson learned. You know, if your bug-fucking mission managed to turn your home planet into a paradise, then imagine what it could do for the whole galaxy. What? Asked Bugfucker. Bugfucker. There's bugs all over the galaxy. Excerpt from A Kink in the Amour, A Bug in the Code, a Primark novella, page 212. With that, Bugfucker proudly announced that their legion was to be renamed to the Insect Pussy Pioneers. For 50 years, they would fly through the stars, spit-roasting bugs together with their father. Then. Bugfucker noticed the Tyranids coming through some binoculars that he had found, and blew his brains out immediately. It is unknown as to whether Bugfucker survived this. Should he still be alive, his location and the whereabouts of his sons too is unknown. Some may doubt the veracity of these tales, but I believe them to be factual. The records surrounding the Lost Primarchs were purged, and being that these are the only surviving tales I have come across in my many, <sighs> many years of scouring Imperial records, I am certain that these are truth. A commodity so painfully sparse in the Imperium today, you will forgive me if I am quick to hope. I shall endeavour to uncover more of his tales. But until such a time, Ave, Chemex, Gloria.
in a Romato. Pro Why the Inquisitors, you will open this door! Shit, they found me! Uh, Fuck! Ludinius, Fuck. stop all the locks! I'm not oh going uh, Shuffle it hard, uh, uh, Ludinius! Uh, uh, never take me alive! Uh. He's got out the window! Quick, Ludinius! 